because there is two hours and 24 minutes left and it's it's people have several people have bid on it what is wrong with people wait how come the auctioneers got it so wrong in coming up with their guide price well what I think is going on here is that a very interesting permitted development uh, angle uh, has got missed by the auctioneers and a lot of the people who uh, were looking at this particular site. Property auctions during COVID-19, what are they all about? Well, they've gone online and in this video uh, we are at the Allsop online commercial auction and I'll be taking you through a little bit of a tour as to what the new online auction world is like and sharing with you um, some things that I miss some valuable things that I miss from the uh, physical auction. And you'll also learn how in this particular auction, a property went for three times the guide price. And guess what? It's still a good deal. So that's all coming up. If you're new to this channel, my name is Ranjan Bhattacharya. We release videos each and every week and they're all dedicated to helping you be more successful in property. So please, smash that like button because it means our videos get shown more on YouTube and remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we upload new content. So as I mentioned we're not in a ballroom in a hotel in London, we're in our office here and all the auctions are online. So during Covid-19 of course many of the property auctioneers have gone completely online and here are three things I miss um, from not having a physical auction. Number one, um, you can't actually tell whether the auctioneer is bidding um, when the reserve price is not being met. Now what do I mean by that? There's this term called bidding off the chandelier. So if the vendor sets a reserve price of say £150,000, um, the auctioneer is legally allowed to make up bids up to that reserve price. Because in any case, the logic of this is uh, the property can't be sold at, at below the reserve price. So it doesn't matter if the auctioneer just tries to kind of stimulate a little bit of artificial interest by making up some bids. Um, but he can only do this up to the reserve price. So a simple tactic when you're in a sort of hotel room physical setting is to, um, when you're interested in a lot, uh, get up from your seat, go to the back of the room, watch the auctioneer's eyes and see whether you can see him reacting to real bidders in the room. You have to be very sharp and eagle-eyed but it's very very handy if you can spot this because if you do spot it then um, you kind of know what the, what the demand is for that lot and if it doesn't sell you can go and pitch the auctioneer with some kind of post-auction offer afterwards. The second thing I miss from physical auctions is the learning. Now obviously you don't win every property that you bid for but one thing I do is that if I lose at auction I go up to the winner and I speak to them uh, because I want to find out one thing. Um, I want to find out whether they have outbid me because they're a plonker and they've quite frankly done their sums wrong or bid too much or the other alternative can be they've got a better plan for the property than I had. Um, something I didn't think of and I find I learn a huge amount just from talking to the winning bidder on properties just to find out what they are, were, are actually planning to do with the lot that they've bid for. And the, and the third reason I love physical auctions is the networking. Um, you simply just build so many contacts by just chatting to people at auctions um, and you don't get the opportunity to do that in the online environment. So online auctions need a little bit of planning and preparation. Uh, you can't just turn up at the hotel and bid uh, like you can do in some physical auctions. You have to pre-register, you have to go through uh, sort of money laundering and ID type of checks and you, you normally have to pay a, some form of deposit uh, for each lot that you are looking to bid on. Obviously if you're not successful that's returned to you but it needs a bit of pre-planning and preparation uh, so that you get your um, bidding details prior to the auction. Now at the moment 
um, all auctions have had to go online because obviously the COVID-19 restrictions on physical meetings and the various auction houses are conducting these auctions in slightly different ways. So as I mentioned, we're at the Allsop uh, commercial auction um, and they do it in a little bit of a strange way, I think. Um, first of all, the auction opens for all lots at exactly the same time. So I think this auction opened at 10 a.m. this morning. So you could bid on any of the lots starting at 10 a.m. And then they close in sequence. So let's just have a look at lot number one. As you can see on the screen, it's a uh, nationwide building. It's um, grade two listed. It's in Leatherhead, Surrey. Guide price is 375 to 400 thousand pound. Now, um, the interesting thing, so all the lots, you can bid on any lot starting at uh, 10 a.m. But what happens is um, they close the bidding on each lot sort of sequentially. So if we look at lot number one, for example, you can see on the screen that bidding on this lot is going to close in 20 minutes time. And if we look at lot number two, you'll see the bidding on that one, lot number two, is going to close um, 10 minutes ahead of lot number two. So that's the way they're kind of doing it. Um, but the strange thing is, I'm not entirely sure what the incentive is to put in a bid as soon as the auction opens. If we look at number one, for example, I can actually see the bidding history. And this is one thing that you can't do um, when you're in the room. I can actually see that bidder number one has put in a bid right at 10 o'clock and since 10 o'clock, it's now 10.40, no one has put up a subsequent bid. So if we look at uh, lot number 45, for example, this is a uh, Barclays Bank building up in Coventry, lovely central location, um, quite a large building. Uh, obviously it's got permitted development rights, which is what's causing a little bit of excitement. And there's potentially, as you can see from the building, uh, some likelihood that in time you'll be able to do something in terms of building an extra floor. So if we look at the, uh, what's happening with the bidding, again, bidding on all the lots opened at exactly the same time. Um, this has, you can see on the screen, there's one hour 38 minutes left for you to put in a bid. If we have a look at the bidding history, my God, can you see what's been going on here? Um, and this is something that you can't see when you are in a physical auction environment. You don't actually have the bidding history like this. So this is quite interesting to have a look at. So let's have a, have a little look. What we can see is there's plenty of interest. Unlike many other lots where either people are keeping their powder dry and not putting a bid until much later on, um, or they're just simply no interest. You can't really tell at this stage. But in this particular lot, a lot of people have decided to get off the starting block straight away and putting a bid. Um, I don't get the point of this. I actually do not understand why you really need to show your hand before the last 10 minutes of the sale. Now contrast that with this one, lot number 43, um, is a property in Blackpool. Now Blackpool, of course, is one of those uh, desolate areas up north. Um, not much going on. Uh, this, it, there's not much development potential in this particular uh, shop retail investment. It's got two existing tenants in there, major high street names, Body Shop and Millets uh, are in this building. Um, it's producing a decent enough rent um, uh, and the leases have a few years left to run. Uh, but the, look at the yield that it's going at. It's 11.56%. So it's a very, very healthy yield. Um, and that is uh, matches the perceived risk, if you like, of investing in retail in an area where you know there's relatively high unemployment and uh, not too much prosperity. And of course, Blackpool is a very, very seasonal type of town. There's not much going on in, 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 in the winter in these sort of areas. So let's have a look at some of the bidding history that has happened with this particular lot. Um, so this, this is uh, bidding has opened at 600,000 pound. I think the bidding uh, um, is opening at and we can see for the history, absolutely naught lot. So you can see the massive difference between the bidding 
um, between lots which are, say, in more affluent areas and that have development potential and the ones which are not in affluent areas and have no development potential at all. Now, this uh, has to be um, a great little pick. Um, I, although I don't like uh, desolate areas, I do like desolate buildings uh, in grey areas. And this is a great example of that. We're in Shoreditch now, lot number 53. Um, guide price is a very uh, tantalising £125,000 for this exceptionally odd-shaped vacant uh, commercial building with one floor above. Now you can see, I mean, it's, a, it's pretty obvious what the opportunity is. It's a very odd shaped building. It's very small, it's this triangular shape, but there is a huge potential there. Just build up and build, do another couple of stories, perhaps three stories and match the heights of the adjacent building. So let's see what the bidding interest is on this vacant building in London. So, wow, wow, that is a lot of interest, folks. That is a lot of interest. So from £125,000, we're now up to a bid price of £287. Uh, and there's still one hour, 40 minutes left to go on this bid. 127 bids it's attracted. So here's another lot that has development potential. It's lot number 52, and we're in Pinner this time. Uh, so it's a shop building, it's a freehold building with, um, with, with shop, with a, with a, with a two-storey uh, chunk to it at the back. Um, it's vacant, um, I think it was owned by a carpet shop and they've now gone bust, it's being sold by a receiver. Um, it's completely empty, uh, there are some flats above, those have all been sold off for long, long leases. Um, it's complete wreck inside as you can see from the pics. Uh, so let's have a look at uh, what the bidding excitement has been. Um, wow, wow. So it opened up at £125,000 uh, and it's now at £276,000. And there's an hour and 34 minutes left to bid on this lot. Isn't that amazing, folks? 62 bids. So we're just uh, back um, right at the end of the bid for lot 52, this one in Pinner, this old carpet shop that I was telling you about. Now what happens is if you put in a bid right at the last minute, it gives you a little bit more time. So um, there's one minute, 54 seconds left on this bid. And this was on a guide, you can see on the screen, 125 to 150,000 pound. And someone is now bidding 362,000 pounds for this lot. Now, if you look at the 110 bids, if you have a look at the last few bids, you can see, um, really, it's been bidder one and 10. They've all got emotionally involved in this deal. Now, uh, straight after this is gone, we'll, we'll have a little look at it and try to uh, analyze why this particular property has gone for so much money way over the guide and how the auctioneers have got it so wrong and why there are two people so hotly contesting this particular property. But this is pretty amazing. So there's two minutes now left on the bid. They've extended it out again. 362,000 pounds is the current bid. That's off a guide of 125,000. What do people see in this smelly old carpet shop? Well, just stay tuned and I'll try to um, explain a little bit about what's going on here. So we're down to the final seconds of the bidding here. Um, <clears throat> now, he hasn't come back in. The bidding still stands at 362. It's with bidder number one. Uh, there's literally uh, closing seconds left. It looks as though bidder number one, the first bidder who came in with the initial bid um, at all those hours ago, bidder one, who came in with his bid starting price at 125, seems to be the final bidder here. And it seems to have been sold to bidder one for 362,000 pound. So why is it then that someone comes in, this lot here is, it is literally an old carpet shop um, in, near, near, near to Pinner on a guide of 125 to 150,000 pound. Bidder number one comes in with his initial bid at 125, it goes up and up and up, and he's willing to pay more than double for it, well, nearly treble for it, 362,000 pounds. What is the angle here? What is the possibility? Well, let's take a look. Are these guys complete nutters? What's, why are they paying 362,000 pounds for this 
particular property? How come the auctioneers got it so wrong in coming up with their guide price? Well, what I think is going on here is that a very interesting permitted development uh, angle uh, has got missed by the auctioneers and a lot of the people who uh, were looking at this particular site. Now let's take a little closer look at what's on offer. You've got two flats on the uh, upper two floors. They're, they're, they're nothing to do with the building. They're all sold off, long leases and all of that. But what you have is a very deep shop, uh, a very deep shop that also has a first floor. So it has a first floor, which is 42 square meters and about 107 square meters of ground floor space. Now, um, what I think is going on here is that someone is looking at the possibility of implementing their permitted development rights to make one or two uh, flats in the space above the shop. Now, uh, this has a first floor, it has 42 square meters, so that is uh, class G uh, permitted development rights. Um, uh, above an A1 or A2 shop, you can build up to two flats. Um, so it is possible they could be looking at um, using that sort of uh, space, 42 square meters, two studios, but I think it's more likely they're looking to get a one or a two bedroom space, a flat in that space above. Now, so that's class G that gets you that flat. And then under another permitted development, class M, that allows you to convert the rear of a uh, shop into a flat. So you can see that on the ground floor, you've got 107 square meters of uh, floor space. It's quite easy to uh, trim the shop back up, back to about 40, 45 square meters and get a beautiful two bedroom flat on the ground floor. Um, so I think that's what they're looking at there. They're looking at combining two different permitted development rights. A lot of people looking at this would just be looking at um, the class M permitted development right, which is a flat at the back. Um, but the person or the two people that were going out on a sort of limb, if you like, for this one are looking at using both Class M and Class G permitted development rights. This guy's purchased it for £362,000. It would probably cost about 120 odd uh, to build the uh, two flats. It's a relatively straightforward uh, conversion job and I think that would be at the top end of of estimate. So you're, you're in for a total of about £482,000. In that sort of area, if you get two flats, um, one two bedroom type of flats in that sort of area, you're looking at, a, at around £260,000 a piece. And the shop will probably rent for uh, anywhere between ten and £12,000 and should value up at around £100,000. So you're looking at £482,000 of cost, so it's 362 to buy, 120 grand build cost, you're totally in for 482. Um, you'd get uh, two flats and a shop, that would give you a GDV um, of about £620,000 with about £138,000 uh, profit in that sort of deal by combining those permitted development rights. So that's the angle on that one. So what do we learn from that exercise? Well, we learn that uh, value is really in the eyes of the beholder and it's down to how clued up you are on permitted development rights and easily realizable development potential. Here, as you can see, even the auctioneers weren't quite clued up on what could be possible with this site under permitted development. There were two bidders in the room on this day who were a little bit clued up and they bid against each other. But even though it went for nearly three times uh, the guide price, uh, it's still £138,000 profit in the deal. But many of these opportunities um, are available at auctions but um, you find much richer pickings as well with commercial agents and direct to vendor where there's even less knowledge of all these permitted development possibilities with these sort of commercial properties to repurpose them to more valuable use. Uh, if you want to find out more, uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel, uh, hit the bell icon for updates uh, as, when we release new videos and like, smash the like button um, it helps us out on YouTube. If you want to know more about um, how to exploit all the myriad of permitted development opportunities for commercial properties, then consider attending my commercial property workshop. Uh, it's a complete package. It tells you the A to Z of how to uh, basically repurpose commercial properties for profit 
Full details are at bakerstreetworkshop.com. I've got a special discount for you because you've reached the end of this video and stayed with me up till now. Enter the discount code RANJAN, that's R-A-N-J-A-N, and you'll get £700 off. See you guys in the next video and see you guys shortly.